seems like though his two top lane bans towards the gender's champion pool. I uh, expect to see Vitaly B go towards their support pick here for Jack Drop. See what they're going to pick up. It's interesting that they ban that Lulu, so it feels like they have something else in mind. The Renata is still up and available if they want to pick that up, but it is also something that could be scarily okay. used against them. Decide to go for the Rakan. You've already got a little bit of, like, engage. You obviously got the Claw into the uh, Frozen Tomb. Then you can follow it up with the Rakan. So I'm kind of liking that on this half, but the potential response here, if they do actually lock in this Nautilus for Winsome, that is two big point and click ultimates to lock members down and when you've got azarian and rakan two very slippery customers people to keep people are very hard to lock down you suddenly find an answer very very effectively there they decide actually to go away from that maybe it's too They're much still gonna be able to kind of targeted cc though. they are going to pick up the all at least for scarface but you are right they could just pick up this nought and with lulu taken away they could go for the renata if they like um, but they still still do have the likes of the Nautilus, the Honestly, Leona. We actually saw, um, what's her name earlier? The uh, Rel. Been a while since seen the Rel, but the Rel shown up. Okay. Looks like the answer will be the Renata, though, away from that. And I mean, honestly, the options were plenty. I think if they go Nautilus, then maybe they look towards something a little more carry oriented, uh, orientated. Uh, something that would, I imagine Unicorns are still weak side. Maybe something like Scarface uh, is Gangplank could have been a solid blind option. Uh, nerfed, but still relatively strong. But now I expect his agenda to go towards something that he can really get uh, his fangs into Scarface on the on with. And I mean, nothing really cuts down the on to size quite like the Gwen does, only really has Camille for competition on that front. Uh, so Vitaly B rounding out with his agenda on a carry would have thought. I will say off the get-go though, a lot of magic damage coming out of Vitaly B's composition, even though Jesper, yeah. of course, will build all those AD items, a lot of magic damage front-loaded into that kit. It's kind of like, you know, 70, 30, like 75-ish percent AD. A lot of magic damage comes from that zap uh, as well. Massive. I call it the Spartan Laser at this point because that's what it feels like when you see uh, people hit. Uh, so yeah, honestly, I think Vitaly B could have to worry about that. A lot of the frontliners could look to sort of stack up magic resist quite quickly and be pretty hard to take down. But still, Skeens and uh, Jessica will deal a sizable amount of physical damage nonetheless. Yeah. Loads of pick tools on both sides. I think this is one of these kind of drafts where I'm going to look towards both teams and just say, where are you going to put your eggs? Uh, what baskets are you going to put them in? And how quickly will you be to actually decide to engage? Because I think when you've got things like Orn, Vi, Ari on one side, and then especially Rakan, right? So quick out of the gates from Fog of War in particular. Uh, I'm really curious to see how Vitaly B are going to use their option there uh, with Lissandra as well in back pockets. Try and just lock down uh, members of Unicorns of Love here. Specifically the Sivir working with that spell shot. I think Shiganari is going to have to be really quick on the trigger with that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like this game is going to be very interesting because you expect to see scaling you've got the gwen you've got the zeri you've got the severe but you do still have this ari on ruby and ruby as you put it to me when we were doing our prep for today earlier you said ruby is the best mid laner in the prime league at the moment on this ari you can really enable a solid mid game for your team so he could genuinely be the bridge for the mid game into late game for unicorns of love sexy edition um, I love that name, so I'm going to say it full as many times <laughs> as possible. Say the <laughs> you know, I'm always going to have a soft spot for Unicorns. A little bit of Jamal the Law before we get into game. I know Caster's talking about Caster's lives, guys, is boring. But Unicorns, they're the, the team that introduced me to competitive League of Legends. Very fun fact. Really? Yeah, well, I got involved, you know, 2014 Worlds is roughly when I started to kind of watch it. But 2015 season, when uh, Unicorns made their appearance at ULCS. Yeah, like a soft spot for him. I've got a soft spot for them as well. I think Sheepy is the like sweetheart of the industry. I absolutely love Aww. him. He's such a nice man. Um, and he joined us for the first ever EU Masters as well. He was part of the casting team for that. Oh yeah, he um, was. So it was really yeah. cool, kind of getting getting you know his insight because he is coaching this team, and yep, um, you know even after all these years, after all these years, not this years, after all these years. <laughs> He's still very switched on and very knowledgeable about League of Legends. I, I mean, evidently so, because he came into the Unicorn Sexy Edition lineup, uh, took over the head coaching role, and all of a sudden, they go from, you know, always kind of being top three, top four, to just the best by a relatively large margin. So I think GP will be watching this game eagerly to see how his team will eye up this French representative. Of course, Vitaly B, which is the LFL as a whole, I think, as a viewer, you might be getting bored of us saying it. You might, I'm not sure if you quite know this, LFL, they're pretty good at League of Legends. <laughs> it's French, uh, they're good at it. They're good at playing <laughs> this game. 
They, they really are, of course, Calming Court not here to defend a potential 4P, I guess we'd call it at this point. So a new champion will be crowned at the end of the tournament. A lot of people have LDLC down as that favorite. I think a lot of people after that. BDSA, of course, in the conversation. Second place team, but Vitality B. We do look threatening. Kept tire of the roster from last split as well. Definitely do have the talent and the experience. A solid mix, right? To yeah. make the run all the way. But loads of strong teams from their own region that they will have to topple to get to that championship. Well, it looks like Skins is actually potentially setting up early onto Scarface. We'll see if they're actually going to go for it. It feels like for now. He's just going to hold fast and uh, agenda is going to shove this wave in. Has still got the cues. Uh, Scarface can just jump away. Skeens reveals himself on the ward. And with the invisibility, they're going to be seeing chill as uh, Ruby does get a nice little trade off there onto Diplex. Wow. That's a very nice trade off onto him. Yeah, level four to level three. The stats difference as well, especially because since the durability patch, you have to remember. I think the old sum was about every level is worth 600 gold. That, that phrase is stuck in my head because it's a freak. Uh, 600 gold <laughs> per level. Now with the durability patch, levels worth, not done the math, but I'd imagine it's probably a lot more than 600. So uh, level three, level four trade, Ruby finding that charm. Really good stuff from him. That could even mean on the bottom side, Lurox won't be able to pick up that skull crab for free as well, as he also has bottom side priority from Shiganari and Winsome. Really quiet first couple of minutes, as you kind of expect. I think this would have been a pretty strange game to have some kind of cheese, but hey, Unicorn's one of the innovators, it feels like, of cheese uh, here historically. Would have been fun to see it, but right now, quiet stuff. Both of these teams domestically dominant early game powerhouses, realistically. I'm not sure if uh, JQ managed to catch the Prime League finals, but man, Unicorn's did not make that finals look particularly close. Schalke definitely did their best, but I feel like every game was in their control, and a lot of it came from Ruby, from Lurox, as a duo pairing up. We'll see if they can do more of that here into Vitality B. It does feel like, you know, typically, and, you know, barring our Azir Corky matchups, Jungle Mid is very much the kind of like the duo to set up the team for mid game, and then you rely on that AD carry. Um, that's definitely this meta and the current way the game is played. Uh, we'll ignore that Lucian Nami from the last game, but that has been strong all year as well, to be fair. Um, the jungle bit, definitely something to kind of keep your eyes on because they could look to set up uh, Shiganari. They could look, you know, Skeens and Diplex could set up Jeskla as well. It looks like Ruby just trying to be very active on the map, getting some vision down, spotting out Skeens, catching where his camps are. A couple of walls have been placed and they've seen them down onto Scarface as Durox is clearing downwards at the moment. Could turn his attention towards that Dragon. Cloud Drake. And like yeah. you were saying, they did get individually buffed and a little bit of early movement speed early. Really, really nice for especially Ruby and Lurox, who are probably going to be looking to be moving around the map quite a lot. Look, man, out of all of the dragons as well, Cloud actually got buffed the most. A lot of the dragons got, uh, you know, buffed around, I think it was 50%. Cloud Dragon just yeah. got, it stats outright got double. <laughs> Went from a three and a half percent to a seven percent oh, combat movement speed. Can you tell that I'm a salesman? By the way, <laughs> uh, we had a brief You're look at the mirror in his bloody Ooh. book. <laughs> I don't think I'm quite that bad. I, 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 look, I'll take slander. I feel like Nymera. You know what? You, fun game. Ruby has Dark Seal. Oh no. Granted, Nymera is probably watching this. And he's an Ari. Nymera's probably watching this with a smile on his face as we talk about it. Odds, him on it. Him, odds on him tweeting about it if he doesn't buy the book. Hi. Hi. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> like 92%, I'm going to say. I, I would say 93%. Like, I'm sorry, okay. To be honest. I'm sorry, I had to. No, no. You, yeah, just one up me. It's fine. <laughs> oh, Scarface. <laughs> Okay, yeah, he's gonna clear the wave here, or at least most of it, but I think this dive still happens. Jack Troll's here as well. Oh, he's done a good job of clearing the wave. Charges away, yeah, Jack Troll. Can they look for it? Deflex is in Four the area. Four versus one. Hmm. 
They've pulled so much towards him. He's catching onto Diplex. Oh, He's looking for the CC. Oh. He flashes. Oh my god! He survives, <laughs> but the Ignite will take him down regardless. I... Meanwhile, in the mid lane, they just get a whole bunch of plates. I'm gonna be honest. Wait. Scarface won that mental, Wait. to be honest. Jess Claw! Jess Claw! They don't need four for unicorns, they just need a Vi! Solo kill, baby. All right. Good stuff, Lurox. Not quite sure how that one kicked off. We might end up getting a replay of that, I imagine. Well, I'll tell you how that side. happened. Yeah. His entire team went topside and left him alone. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, Vitality B, they lose out. Uh, quite a bit. Four members are invested for just an Orn. They don't stick around for plates because they just... I mean, the dive is so inefficient in time because Scarface <laughs> plays it so well, clears away the wave. Now, Unicorn's on the bottom side. This three plates go down into a Sivir. I think next to Zeri, Sivir has been one of those pentakill monsters. He's uh, oh. dive onto. Should be okay though. Yeah. Actually, even through the exhaust, that was a pretty decent trade there for Shignari. Uh, I feel like he wants to reset, but he does have 22 sacks on that coal left, so he could hang around, but we'll just see Jeskler uh, blind check in the jungle while his entire team are topside. So yeah, I mean, there's your answer, Jamada. He, yeah. he made uh, a mistake. Pretty big one. Yeah, I mean, Jeskla doesn't really have much business walking through there. I mean, it's the fact that he kind of goes into the jungle and then paths down. If he was going to cover mid whilst his team were four-man diving Scarface, would have made a little more sense, but makes that parking the error. Virox there to punish, capitalize as well. Uh, expect to see a lot of that, by the way. Virox getting on top of Jeskla with that arc key. A lot of additional follow-up on top of it from the unicorns. They really want to shut him down once Jess was gone. There are still quite a few damage threats available, but I feel like, you know, that mental war of Zeri just being alive, the mental turmoil, turmoil rather. Turmoil? Turmoil, I know, English, it's, it's a hard language. It is, apparently. That uh, Zeri seems to just kind of bring every time she's on the rift. It's uh, one that will likely lead unicorns to want to try and shut it down every single time he gets that late stage of Zeri. Zeri Gaming, we like to call it in Twitch chat. It's just very scary. But I think Shiganari on the Sibit will have something to say about it on the opposite side. Well, Shiganari has actually got himself uh, three plates looking towards that fourth right now. They've got two plates in the mid side as well. Uh, so this Rift Elf is going to have to be bloody effective because all of that, it kind of is a bleed on effect from that top lane dive. Another plate will finally go over to Shiganari. We'll be able to get that gold over to him. Lurox is coming in, and Jeskla made a little bit of poke damage here as Jack Troll may just jump oh. in. Sent back to his <laughs> demise. That was slick. He just caught that. The charm is going to be held for a moment. Jeskla. Jeskla is going to join his support in the gray screen. We will see a Rift Tail get summoned in the mid lane, though. So it's going to be a tower for tower, or at least a bunch of plates given over. But it's going to be a pretty quick rotation around, so I think problem Chicken Army should be able to get this. The problem for me is even if, you know, Vitality B were to get a lot of this tower, it really only gives you map control. The gold isn't really that all impressive. Oh! oh! You got it's gone so the wrong. I, uh, not like this. <laughs> not like oh. this, Vitality B. And this is what I was going to say. It's like one of those things. It's like when you see a play happen, for example, onto the Orm, which we saw earlier on. And it's like, okay, great. You killed an Orm, but on the bottom side, Shiganari got three plates. Uh, gold is just worth more on Civit yeah. right now than it is worth on Scarface. It's not the same value. And right here, this was just nice from Lurox. He just stops it. He's not allowed to cross the wall. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200 or pounds, depending on where you're from. And uh, Unicorns just very easily collapse on top of Jeskler because now he's alone underneath this tower, isolated. Really great stuff from Unicorns. Flawless stuff, really, from them. As the uh, the basketball stop, I, I, I'm not sporty, so I can't tell you what... The what basketball the actual... stop? You know, when they stop the basketball from going in the hoop, from blocking it. <laughs> I guess you can do it in volleyball as well. <laughs> Look, a block! A block is the word I'm looking for. You've seen me. I'm not athletic. You're killing it today, Jake. You really I are. know, man. I'm glad to be back with you. It's I've, been I've too long. Yep, I've, I've missed it. And uh, speaking of things that don't get missed, 
Unicorn's picking up another neutral objective, this Ocean Dragon, which, by the way, is objectively the worst soul in the game now. <coughs> Cloud Soul's worst soul. <coughs> Cough. I'm going to make this a random joke, honestly. Until until people believe, I think, Ruby. Going to have his base interrupted. But Unicorn's, so far, all the Dragon's Vitality B did pick up that Herald, but... Gold really only going split in between Skis and Diplex, and the kill was immediately traded onto Ruby and oh, do you know what I see? Oh, well, I see it. Uh, you see Jessler, Jessler <laughs> getting, getting, um, out. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, okay. no. Flash for flash. But that is more valuable Always. for Lurox. Always. And that was really smart from Jessler. He kind of held on to that dash over the wall, made Lurox oh, cast the ult. Uh, Scarface, we've seen this play once. Can he survive this time, though, is the real question. No. Oh, but he finds a knock-up. He's getting a bunch of damage onto his gender, but... They will go down, and again, three members go up to the top side for a kill, but they don't really get much more. On the other side, Unicorn's a Love Sexy Edition, gonna quite happily Dude. get himself a plate in the mid lane. This is just like, Shiganari is just walking around going tau to tau saying, oh, more gold, yum, get in my belly. I will, I will take everything I can get. And uh, so far, up 1.8 thousand gold on Jesklot. Jesklot doesn't even have his shield will complete. Oh. Meanwhile, Shikanari is almost, he's almost got PB at 14 minutes into the game. That's absolutely absurd. He's turning into just goes to show. He, <laughs> go on. He's getting fin filthy stinking rich, and then he's yeah. going to get revenge for Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that's, that's maybe your best line yet. Like I ever, was worried actually. that was going to miss real hard. That, I'm not going to lie. I started doing uh-oh. For, for, for Batman enjoyers, spot on. For uh, your, <laughs> the average the average Joe, maybe not so much. Oh, Je oh. Jeskla, no. Not oh, like Jeskla. this, Jeskla. Unicorns of Love, sexy edition. They're looking pretty fit. I'm not going to lie. You know, I feel like if this is a solo queue game by Tally B, <laughs> like, the top lane would just be like, bot lane, play safe. For God's sake, I'm just like, <laughs> I can't play the game. <laughs> but uh, Vitality B doing what they can to cross map on the top side of the map. It has to be said, we can make as many jokes as we want. Uh, doing what they can to get Sagenda ahead instead. And definitely Sagenda is into a pretty short range team form position with not too much to stop him, right? Has the Shroud to always deal uh, with the Renata ultimate, so he just kind of has to hold on to that. Uh, ability to deal with not being berserked away from the target he wants to be hitting and it's definitely a very valid win condition and path in to still winning team fights i think the core concern really for vitality b right now is just shiganari it's two items already 15 minutes into the game he is so damn powerful and he's always going to have things like a bailout to get him out of danger always can have ruby kite backwards charm any targets going on top of him keep his ad carry alive same thing for lorox there's just so much pill potential for this Sivirit uh, will always make Vitaly B's diving efforts very difficult to pull off. Yeah, and this is why Unicorns of Love have been a dominating force domestically in the Prime League over in the Dark Region. They've just been so, so good at getting ahead and playing to their conditions. Shiganari's going to do his best to hold on to this wave. It is a Sivir, so that wave is going down. And they're bringing the Teleport and the Go out. They're going to get a knock-up onto nobody because Shigendo able to block away for the moment. The rest of the team jumping in. Jessica instantly annihilated as the Charm lands onto Shigendo. Down they go. And it is two already dead on the side of Vitality B. Unicorns of Love going to quite happily just push up into the mid lane. The pings are going down. They have time just to pick up this Herald as well. they got loads of time. They've got all the time in the world. All right now, 40 seconds till the Dragon spawns up as well. Pick this one up. If they want to reset, they can. All right now, I'm going to really leave the members that need to be out. I think actually because they commit to this, they could end up being late to this dragon. So maybe Vitality B can get set up around the area. But take a look at the minimap. Diplex, he's resetting. No teleport to come back out onto the map straight away. And even if Skeens and Jack are able to get into the river right now and set up some vision, it seems like Unicorns aren't really going to be too far behind on pace. Although, as I say that, Lurok's actually stuck around on the top side. He's clearing away Gromp before he resets potentially. So uh, hmm. that could be a big deal in terms of this dragon setup. Maybe Unicorns just don't care. We'll have to see he's not what reset. the priorities are. And he's not, re he's not even reset. All right. Giga Chat just what? wants his Grump, I guess. Like, <laughs> That's on Grump. That is on Grump. He was on Grump.
He was. Now he's in the river. And the dragon has been started. The battle lines have been drawn, but fighting on an ocean drake always feels bad because it's a slow. If oh, the yeah. dragon is, is on you, you basically are fighting against like half a member on the enemy team, just slowing everybody down. I'd say yeah. a full member. As uh, Sushenda will spot out Scarface as uh, Dragon's yeah. going a little bit low. All the flankers coming in from the side. Lurox may just look for Jeskla over the wall. They're looking for the charm, going to miss out on a bunch of abilities on that Ari. Charging up the Q is not going to go the down. Herald's charging in the mid lane, nice by the way, guys. Reset. The Herald is charging in the reset. Here comes the Ornhorn. Here comes the overtake of a fight. Jeskla instantly scattered away from everybody else. His unicorns of love are just trying to keep themselves alive for as long as possible. And two kills have been picked up by Sisgenda. And Lurox is on his lonesome. Bolt Breakers over the wall. And the Dragon is Vitalities. They just smashed unicorns there. Positive fight for Vitality B because they're able to get on top of Shiganari and Winston. The disengage tools just weren't quite there in time. Scarface was doing a really good job of guarding some of the flank potential from Jack Troll from Shigenda. But in the end, Vitality B just end up full sending it front to back and they win out. Even though Lurox got on top of Jess Club, the issue is Shigenda is on top of that Civet and shredding her. I saw some team fight damage there on the screen. Much comes out, but not enough to take down the Vitality B members. And they win that team fight, get themselves a dragon, and all of a sudden, this game looks a little more playable from their point of view. It does, but you do still have a 0 4 Zeri, 2,100 gold behind the yes. enemy Civet. Um, but experience is equal, I'll give them that. I do raise you a two item Gwen. Yeah, ah, true. That and, is scary. And I'll be honest, as much as I think Sivir is pretty broken. Gwen is immune, and I feel like Gwen is immune. I feel like that might, uh, you know, invalidate any argument you might have against that. So, oh, there wasn't uh, going to be an argument for me on that one. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I, as as the game goes, Scissors beats Boomerang. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you can see it's just frontal engage from Jack Troll lands onto Winsome, and then from that point onwards, Shigenda is just one v one in Shigenari. Like, what can he do? He's just getting run over. And even though on the complete opposite side of the river, you can see Lurox is doing a great job trying to lock down Jeskla. Jack Troll returns from his frontal engage, heals his AD carry, and Lurox is forced to get away from Vitaly B. AD carry, who he's been oh so fond of this game. Vitaly B pick themselves up that neutral objective for themselves, deny away the potential of that very early soul. In his defense, he had one job, and that's old Jeskla. He's done that enough to the point where Jeskla kind of isn't a champion for a bit. Um... So now maybe he has to find someone else to ult, but it feels like you just ult AD carry and Lorox is gone. Okay, that is my job. That is my role. As high value boomerang blade. They were sound award. I know it was pretty hot. Oh, okay. I did. Yeah. I totally missed that. They are looking for Shignari here. He's, uh, oh my god! The charm comes in. <laughs> Everyone is completely obliterated. What the man. hell happened? <laughs> He's just down, and his gender will go down as well. Stopwatch, thumbs up, he knows he's doomed. Dude. Shut down for Shignari. You know, we don't get to see all chat on broadcast, because often or not, it's not quite PG. But I can imagine, <laughs> you know, just for the sake of the meme, that Lorox is just typing XD every time. This is his key on Jeskla. Just not allowed to play out these team fights, man. Forced away so quickly. I apologize for my giggles, my unicorns. Uh -oh. Aiming a potential Baron takedown. To spot out a couple of members in that bush and that should give up the game give up the gig and it's like unicorns will back away and i mean even though we look at this fight again right vitaly b they're just looking to get a little bit of pressure potentially a dive onto shikanari no summoner spells right uh, gets away very quickly and just immediately lorox sees red on jesper all of those all just end up following onto him Everfrost clips shigenda and unfortunately that means that he has to go down Really I'm good amazed Jessica hasn't worn out his flash key at this point. He keeps pressing <laughs> it and the moment it comes up. I don't think any amount of summoner spells is going to stop Lurox <laughs> from pressing his R key on him at this point, to be honest with you. I feel like it's just, it's preordained. It's like, you know, water is wet, you know? Rain, rain will fall eventually. It just feels like inevitable stuff. Poor Jessica. It does man. feel... Uh, yeah, poor Jessica. I do. I feel I feel his pain, but at the same time, he picked Zeri. He asked for this. You know, actually... Into Vi as well. Yeah. He picked it into Vi. You know what? All of a sudden, I'm feeling a lot less bad for Jessica. <laughs> you, <Yeah. laughs> you, you raise a good point. <laughs> oh, no! Please! 
please run. Get run, just break. I mean, this is so absurd. Like 2.7k between the two AD carries. Obviously, you know, Jesper hasn't been allowed to play the game. Credit to Unicorns, but also credit to giving Shiganari so much gold, so much time. And now Ruby should be all right. Just force out Spirit Rush. Really good stuff. And uh, oh. we should return to a bit of a neutral, bit of a map state. What are you uh oh in it? What? Uh, there's just the Dark Seal in the inventory. Ah. Nymera is a uh, is a lot upset with that one. As uh, well, Skeens has to jump over the wall. Is he gonna fall on the rocks? Don't do it. Okay, like he doesn't. The no, but look at the minimap because it looks like unicorns actually have first oh. move ahead of Vitaly B. Skeens. Ah, uh, bolt. Season way. Dodge out a fair amount there. It's got the movement speed, but they're chasing him down. Lurox chasing off for a little bit more. Oh no. There's a goat in the bush, Skeens. You're gonna get yourself CC. Ruby. Take the Yep. <sighs> Goodbye, Skeens. <laughs> I, I don't know. That was a really awkward sequence of play right there. Unicorns should be able to pick up the dragon off the back of it, and it looks like they absolutely will. Vitality B. Do you know what? Just kind of caught sleeping, I guess, in the bottom side of the map. Uh, really hard to tell. I think so. But I think it, as awkward as it was, I think Skeens made the right play. That could have been him and uh, Sustainer going down. Yeah. Instead, no, I agree. it was yeah. just him. Yeah. So actually, I think as awkward as that play looked, and it was definitely a misposition by them, but led to that. At least the, the read afterwards was, one of us is going down. Let's just see who gets away. And this is why junglers are the most selfless players in League of Legends, guys. Let it be a lesson. Yeah, my jungler never feeds my lane because he never nope. comes. How selfless of him. Yeah, really good stuff. And you know what? Yeah. Oh, Matt, I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like, at this point, Vitality Beat, they're only down 3,000 gold. A lot of this is being made up by Sagenda. And I think we can, you know, we can wax lyrical about how good unicorns have been this game. Yeah, 100%. Uh, but I feel like this game, as much as we are joking a lot, and I will say, maybe we should take it seriously. This game's not really done, because all he really takes no, is no, one, no. one really good fight from Zagenda. And all of a sudden, Vitaly B are certainly back in it. Jeskala just needs more time to catch up with Shiganari. It's, uh, it's a lot of time, because uh, the problem Shiganari's is... even got himself a hex drink, what's the problem? Hit me with it. Well, it's, it's not just, uh, yeah, the hex drink is one thing, but you know, Jeskala is down uh, an entire item, but also the Worm Fallen Sacrifice on Shiganari as well. So he is got the extra half an item on, on top of the Kraken Slayer. So he's he is hard to deal with. A level up, an item and a half up effectively. Well, actually, basically two items if you count both halves with that hex drinker in there as well. He is hard work for the team to deal with, but they're going to look for him regardless. Oh no, Shiganari, he gets the spell shield off at the right time. And he's able to survive a trade of Everfrost. Means Duplex is going to get himself hit by a charm and lose half his health. But Shiganari used everything to get away there. That's the impactful thing here from this play. It's that there's no summoner spells now for the next couple of minutes from Shiganari. And if Vitaly B can get on top of him again, if they can throw enough at him that the spell shield just doesn't matter and maybe there's a chance of locking him down and then maybe you can play out the fight because as soon as you remove him from the equation the fights look a lot more even I'll tell you that much yeah. for free look across the lanes right now it's item parity across the board the only places where there's discrepancies is gender at three items and a shiganari at three and a half against jack spectre uh, yeah spectre is jess Clues, rather i'm looking at the second screen uh that's the only place where that item discrepancy exists. So if they can actually pick up uh, Shiganari, all of a sudden these fights look a hell of a lot more even. And now that he's got no summoner spells for the next couple of minutes, that's definitely a pretty big possibility. Well, 26 minutes on the clock. That gold lead that you're kind of hitting on that hasn't actually grown too much. Uh, the problem is, is that gold lead ah. is mm. on the AD carry difference. And Jessica, mm -hmm. he's not going to get any gold because he can't even get the... the... Oh, that's so sad. He didn't even get the cannon. That cannon's on like 2 HP. That's the lowest HP cannon I think I've seen in a while. And now the crucial thing on the back of it is Unicorn's gonna get a pretty meaty chunk out of this inhibitor yeah. tower. In fact, I think they're just gonna get it. Vitality B don't have any wave clear available to them. And it's just Wait, also an inhibitor after the fact too. Gender's on the top Unicorns side of the map. Love. There's nowhere to respond. Unicorns, man. Pick after pick. Jeskla. I mean, this is 
just denied the access to Lady Legends this game. It's just has not been able to play. I mean, Unicorns of Love, respectfully looking edition. These guys are playing <laughs> super, super well right now. And uh, it's not Skeens' fault, but Lurox definitely has just made sure that Jessica has not had fun at all. And it's yep. been rough for him. Yeah, this is um, this is bullying, right? Like, is this, this is TOS stuff at this point? Like, at, at what point does it start to, like, do we need to start <laughs> to get worried? You know what I mean? Like, it's not, I mean, it's not really on us. It's, it's on Laura. So I just tell you, hold on. We're just, here, we're just here to yell at him, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's uh, focus in here. 50 seconds away from this Ocean Soul for Unicorn's Vitality B. I have to deny this one away. Otherwise, it's just another buff that they have to deal with permanently and gender. All Vitality B stacked in this brush. Skeens popping that mist is actually going to give a little bit of information about Vitality, where Vitality B could be right now. They are definitely looking for some kind of flank. Again, when you've got a short range composition with something like Rakan, if you can find a snapping gauge out of Fog of War, it's so easy to just collapse on top of it. We saw it once with a front to back team fight. And what I'd like to see yeah. is Scarface do his best to try and track where Jack Troll could be, where Sajenda could be. You saw him doing it, that team fight, which Vitality B actually won earlier on. Vitality B just kind of made the split. Oh, oh to no, go Jeff in the game! Oh, he's down! Oh, you might be right. We might be breaking TOS here. That oh. is just unfair. The Vault Breaker Flash ult combo just to pin him down. Now, Jake, I'm going to make a bold assumption. Yeah. I have a feeling that Vitality B might start first picking or banning Vi after this game. I I think at least against uh, <laughs> Unicorn to Love again, this yeah. will not be happening. Yeah, no, I don't think this is going to happen again. Man, oh man, that's Soul as well. Unicorns pick up now. They can kind of just do whatever the hell they want on the map. I will say, the pace of the game itself has definitely kind of, it feels like, slowed down, right? There's no immediate Baron being picked up. This is just nasty. I mean, what what can you do realistically? Yeah, Flash, yeah, Shield Bow. No cleanse that time. But even if you had to I cleanse. mean, that's, that's, that's leave your keyboard, go grab a glass of water and cool off <laughs> after after this. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a big Zeri hater. So this is, this is spiritual healing to me. I have <laughs> mu much like... <laughs> Much Maybe like, that's why me and you are in such good spirits right now, because we're just watching a Zeri get it, clapped. It's, it's like we've seen so many Zeris like pop off, both, you know, LEC internationally over in the LPL, LCK, that this just felt, it just feels good. Like seeing Zeri, it, it feels like watching Zeri, the champion, perform as penance. It's forced penance. Yeah. What, what can she do? She's just dying over and over. Uh, or it's like the... It's like the uh, the Simpsons meme, you know, stop, he's already dead. <sighs> yes, I, I mean, the worst thing is, is look at the items between Jeskla and Shignaria right now. There is two items, two complete items difference between these two. Yeah. They do technically still scale. They have the Gwen. They do have the, um, the Zeri. He obviously scales incredibly into the late game, but like you're saying, items are just so okay. impactful on to your Sivir, but your Sivir can't use them if they're dead. The bailout goes down. Oh, and my, oh God. my word, Winsome survives. The bailout pops and the fight goes wrong. The stopwatch for Shigari able to do so much work. Jessica rejoins Charms and dies again. Run over by the Orn. And this game is unicorns to take. It went so, so wrong for the side of Vitality B. Jeskla, zero and seven at the end of it all as well. Unicorns of love, show us why they dominated the Prime League. Showed us why they are one of the teams to watch coming in to the Amazon EU Masters. 31 minutes on the clock, a couple of kills to pad the stats. And Unicorns of Love absolutely flatten LFL's Vitality B. Look, this was the marquee matchup of the day, really, right? Yeah. When you look.